Hey everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today, I want to share my experience of using this Topping DX7 Pro Plus Digital to Analog Converter and Headphone Stage together. It features the ESS9038 Pro Digital to Analog Converter chip, DSD natively up to 512, PCM 768K and LDAC compatible total high risk certified by JAS retail for 700 US dollar in United States and it has your multiple output functionality which means you can use it at the headphone amp as well as using the uh, all you know RCA and all the analog out at the very same time so it can output all the audio signal from all available output at the very same time so which may be very convenient for some people topping dx5 is one of my favorite deck in topping lineup aside from topping e70 velvet so this one is really enhanced overall experience and quality of the component as well as sound quality over dx5 the difference is overall noise floor is much better, better sound quality. Some may say, wow, these decks are all transparent. They all sound the same. They are very wrong. Even for very same brand, they may sound the same if you feed them one frequency range, okay? But if you listen to regular music, then if you are sensitive enough, then you can notice, totally notice the different in sound quality. DX5 retail for $450, this one retail for $700, so $250 more than you get two additional digital inputs and one more balanced headphone stage output as well as 12 volt uh, trigger features that you can simultaneously turn it on and off on all compatible devices. So that is a big plus. When I listen to this topping DX7 Pro Plus with the uh, headphone stage, right? I was using my Sony headphones and I end up preferring this Verum 1 planar magnetic headphones. The sound is deep and rich sound quality, very nice tonality and really engaging to listen. So different from DX5 is more refinement in uh, upper range of frequency, very well controlled, more definition as well as better control in lower frequency response. Appear to be uh, bass notes seems to be a bit it dig deeper and more pronounced and more uh, revealing sound. Micro detail and nuances are very well produced, incredibly uh, detailed sounding without overdoing in any frequency range. But please keep in mind, if the recording is bright, it will also show the actual sound quality of your music as well. So, but for the headphone stage wise, I can totally uh, listen to this DX7 Pro Plus with any of my headphones. I can totally enjoy it and it has very good control, very good driving power. I was using this headphone stage on my desk. I moved them to this, my main system. Oh, by the way, this one, I've been, this one is like, I had this for a very long time. I just haven't had time to make a review video about it. So it's been like four, four, five months now. As soon as I moved over to my main system, I connected with this uh, leather buck R2, a fully balanced class A pre-amplifier, 500 watts class D mono blocks from Sabai Audio, driving all these three speakers back and forth. And I find it to be very clean and neutral sounding. Transparency is there to to re-deliver the music as it recorded and producing the sound without interfering the uh, sound quality and sound signature of your system and your speaker. So transparency is there, but it has the, uh, a little bit more richer tonality, slightly warmer sound from upper bass to high region that, that white frequency range has a little bit warmer, a bit richer tonality to it than the uh, DX5. 
not as rich as the uh, Topins, uh, that what you call E70 Velvet, but this one has that kind of sound color to it in that range of frequency, and it has very well controlled bass as well. It may not be as tight as some of such as a Custer A26 or that kind of DAX, but this one has very well controlled and very good articulate bass quality with deep and rich notes in lower register area. Background noise is very good, very quiet and really nice dark background. Instrument separations, every detail and nuances it properly reproduced. Best of all, when I switch around these speakers, it can totally show the uh, sound signature of the speaker. So let's say I started with this JBL 100 Classic 75th. It has a bit forward and real lifelike uh, soundscape and sound reproduction as well as it has good refinement in overall frequency range with very good immediacy and attack that it can produce. So that sound quality is totally retained as well as enhancing it with DA7 Pro Plus, you know, slightly warmer and richer tonality all over the frequency range to enjoy my music more than other ESS decks. A lot of decks use the ESS 903A Pro chip, but that's depending on how they implemented in that design, right? So this one did a great job. Topping, SMS, uh, Gustard always outdo themselves, especially the price that they are selling. These companies are really making it different in modern day audio industry for affordable, high quality sound. So this DX7 Pro Plus is no exception. It has, it has the sound, it has the built quality, it has all the features that you may ever need for any of your music playback. Whether you want to use it on your desktop or your full blown hi-fi system, you can do it all with very good quality sound. And when I switch over to this KEF R11 speakers using very same setup, then sound signature get a little bit smaller. Width is reduced compared to this JBL, but it has mid-band forward sound with the really good bass quality and very well controlled deep sound with nice and engaging tonality. Then I move over to this Pioneer TED S1EX and soundscape get wide and really engaging. I mean, more air and more space as well as retaining great musicality and very good engaging mid-range band that I can totally enjoy listening to. Doesn't matter what speaker you pair them with, it can totally re-deliver the sound in very good sound quality out of your system without interfering, doesn't suppress the any frequency range or doesn't re overproduce in any frequency range. It's just about perfectly balanced sound. But saying that, these ESS chips can get a bit bright time to time with some music. I try all the digital inputs, both analog outs and RCA out is slightly less gain than the XLR outputs, but overall sound quality, if volume is matched, XLR outputs has a better separation and better resolution as well as better immediacy. I try a lot of different music, especially I keep on trying Adele a 30 album. So trying that 30 album as the CD ripped album, I try with this DX7 Pro Plus and using my Dano PME SX11 or this uh, leather bulk pre and the glass D setup. What I find is the uh, 30 album sounded nice and rich, but it also can reveal that brightness region. So I don't play very loud. Mostly I listen around 70 to 75 dB range. So even that, it can get a bit bright with that 30 album listening with my speakers. 
upper mid range to like a lower highs area always seems to get a bit forward and a bit brighter than the uh, other chips that I had experience you know using in my system so especially after I had experience with those uh, AKM 4499EX chips this ESS9038 Pro chip has the uh, more immediacy and more attack as well as brighter sound signature in upper mid-range frequency. So that is depending on your personal preference, right? Whether you want to go with 4499EX or this ESS9038 Pro chips, depending on what you like. But personally, this DX7 Pro Plus do better job than other people did with this chip in this price point. It has nice and engaging tonality if you feed them good quality music. This DX7 Pro Plus compared to such as uh, SMS Audio, SU10 or D400EX or Dinar Frips, uh, Aries 12, etc. Comparison to those decks, top in DX7 Pro have a slightly leaner side of a sound quality, especially the SMS D400 EX. DX7 Pro Plus has a good neutral sounding sound signature and sound color with a little bit of richer side of tonality. I wouldn't call it warm, but a little bit on a bit warmish sound coloration in upper mid range to upper range of frequency so that is the highlight and true standout feature of this dx7 pro plus as well as all the headphone stage and all the simultaneous outputs 12 volt triggers so that those are really good features and the menu system you just hit one push or double push and it will totally change the, uh, how you want to output and how you want to control it. You can control everything through the remote control. So to me, this one is great buy personally because it has very good quality headphone stage as well as very good high fidelity digital to analog converter come with it and the price is right and performance is great. What not to like. I mean, totally recommend it, my friend. Thank you very much for watching and happy listening.
a miner for a heart of gold. It's these expressions that never give that keeps me searching for a heart of gold. And I'm getting old. They keep me searching for a heart of gold and I'm getting old I've been to Hollywood I've been to Redwood I've crossed the ocean for a heart of gold I've been in my mind it's such a fine line that keeps me searching for a heart of gold And I'm getting old It keeps me searching for a heart of gold And I'm getting old Keeps me searching for a heart of gold Keeps me searching and I'm growing old Keeps me searching for a heart of gold I've been a miner for a heart